So in the end, it's just too expensive for me to use reverb on anything that matters that much. I have a complete love-hate relationship with reverb. I love reverb for so many reasons. I love that it connects musicians to each other. You help find great gear. They've gained so much momentum that we're no longer uh, suckers for eBay of just getting scammed and getting broken stuff sent to you and then no protection when you buy stuff. Uh, Reverb has done such incredible things for the guitar community. I think any it would be very foolish to say that anything particularly negative about Reverb uh, as far as finding cool gear as being a buyer. Um, but for being a seller, Reverb has just kind of gotten worse and worse and worse, and you've gotten a worse deal along the way. Um, the moments in which I hate Reverb, uh, which I have been well documented, lots of people have seen me uh, stare at a camera and wax philosophical about how Reverb has screwed over their sellers. Uh, I've taken a couple hard hits from Reverb, and that has really scared me off of them. I haven't really used them other than, like I've sold stuff here and there, but not nearly at the speed at which I was in like 15, 16, 17, and 18. And so I do think it would be foolish to say that reverb is bad for buyers, but reverb is uh, becoming not a great deal for sellers. Uh, so for example, um, a couple weeks ago, I sold my Gibson J45, and I think that's the last expensive guitar I will ever sell on reverb. For a couple reasons, this is going to be probably the last expensive guitar I sell on reverb. The first thing that got me was the fees. Everyone has complained about the fees. I sold it for $1,925, which was great because I paid $1,300 for it a year ago. So that should have been a really good profit, a good spread for me, which isn't always what I'm trying to do. But in this case, I was trying to get as much money as I could to offset my new guitar, which was the $2,000 that I put into the Huss and Dalton TDM. So I sold this guitar for $19.25 on Reverb. I offered to pay for free shipping. That's one of my tricks that always seems to work better is that people will pay more for an instrument if you will offer free shipping. So shipping was 30 couple bucks. I already had a box. I had all the packing materials to send it. So that wasn't a problem, but I went to check out and my cheapest option for shipping was $89. And I didn't know why. That that didn't add up. It was 30 couple bucks on the page before. So Reverb, now, on any order over $1,500, requires, you cannot unselect the button, uh, you have to buy their buyer protection. It used to be 1%, which would what, be $19? Uh, now it's two or 3%. They don't ever, they don't tell you how they calculate it. But for me, it was about $50. It was $49 plus the $30 for shipping. They wouldn't let me take it off. And here's the thing, I carry insurance on everything that I buy and sell. Uh, so I don't need reverb buyer protection. Sometimes I buy it just because I don't wanna claim it on my insurance, yada, yada, yada. It got to me that I couldn't get away from it. So then I packed up the box, I got the label, I got everything ready to go, I shipped it. Later that day, I got an email saying that my, e that my earnings had been approved for payout. And I went to look at it and out of that $1,925 given, I was gonna cover $30 of that in shipping. So call it $1,895. I brought home $1,701 and some change. Yeah, so that's $225, $224 that Reverb gets to keep, not me. They didn't own the guitar, they didn't sell the guitar, they just facilitated the transaction. Uh, so with that, part of that is the 5% that they get. But the other things that they don't tell you about is that they charge you for credit card processing at two and a half percent. A friend of mine, a subscriber, he works in finance and he was telling me there is no way that a company as big as Etsy or Reverb would ever pay more than 0.7% up to maybe 1.1%. So Reverb is also, yes, they raise their fees from three and a half to five percent but they're also making this giant spread as well on the credit card processing fees that they're charging us as well plus they're requiring insurance so that's another 50 bucks so in the end it's just too expensive for me to use reverb on anything that matters that much so i'm going to gbase so there are three things that you need if you are going to sell stuff quickly and get the most money out of it that you can on any selling platform, but especially for me as I'm moving from Reverb into Gbase. So the three things that you need are good pictures that captivate people's attention, clear and compelling descriptions that help them overcome any obstacle that they would have to buying your piece of gear, and then you need to set a clear call to action, a clear expectation of, 
you will buy this thing and it will ship at this time and you will get it and your life will be wonderful. If you can do those three things well, people will want to work with you. They will want to buy your pedals, buy your amps, buy your gear. So the first thing is pictures. In your pictures, you want to highlight everything you want your customer to see, and you have to remove everything that would distract them or draw their attention away. So have a clean desktop, have a good lamp right over top of them, uh, focus just on the guitar or the piece of gear itself, make sure that it is really tightly in focus, if you have portrait mode on your phone, if it's a good square box, usually that works well. The only time that it goes wrong is when you use portrait mode on a headstock of a guitar uh, or anything that has multiple angles and facets. Uh, it'll chop off tuners, it'll have fuzzy you know, tuner heads, and it won't look as great but it's getting better all the time. If you have a DSLR, run it in aperture mode. Uh, in the Canon world, you can run it on aperture priority mode. Get the lowest f-stop you can, get as close to the thing with as much ground behind you, and you will have beautiful, crispy, wonderful pictures. The better your pictures, the quicker people tend to buy. The second thing is descriptions. So in your descriptions, you wanna do three things as cleanly and concisely as you can. First, you wanna just lay out as clearly as you can what is awesome about this pedal. If it's an overdrive, talk about how it's dynamic and it's powerful, and if you dig in hard, it'll overdrive, but if you bring your volume back, if you play with your fingers, it'll clean up for better note separation. All of that language at first will feel a little clunky, but you'll get there. You'll be able to describe it really well to your potential buyer. The second thing is you need to talk about what it will do to the player. It will help you play more rock and roll, it'll build your confidence, it'll help you believe in yourself as a guitar player more. Talk about what that thing, so that thing is awesome, and when you have that thing, it will make you this kind of player. And then lastly, you need to draw it all together and give a clear call to action. What do you want them to do? You want them to buy it right now, email you, or call you, text you. The other thing is, then you can alleviate any fear or frustration or concern they might have. Usually that comes around the speed of shipping. So if you can say, buy it today, it will ship within 24 hours in original box or original case, whatever it is, you want to show them that they should take action and you will take care of all the details. Their lives will be wonderful because it's awesome and it will make them awesome. All of that to say that all builds together to be a really great and compelling description. So you have captivating pictures paired with a clear and compelling description. All of that is tied together with your ability to sh prepare the thing, ship the thing, get it to your customer as quickly as possible. One quick note I found, things sell faster when you offer free shipping. People will pay more than it costs for you to ship them. So you'll get, you know, eight to 10% more for something if you just offer to cover shipping. So for me, that's a pretty much a no brainer. Most pedals are four to $8 to ship within the US to other places in the US. So someone will pay $10 more for the item and it's only gonna cost me four to $8. That's a no brainer. And that leads us to shipping. You have to know how to ship the pedal, the guitar, the amp. So here's an example of how I pack up an amp. This is this little Gibson BR9 that is being packed up. The first thing you have to do is fill the voids. Fill all the voids uh, in the back of the amp with paper. I don't take out the tubes because each time I have, I've had broken tubes by the time I get there. I would rather have a well-packed, uh, all the voids filled with newspaper or craft paper, uh, bubble wrap is okay. I never use peanuts because shipping peanuts are the worst, especially for electronics. Fill the voids. Then box selection. Box selection is a critical part of this. You want a box that it gives you a good three or four inches on either side of good buffer zone for packing materials to make sure that your amp, as it is drop kicked and shuffled and thrown, you know, overhand in the back of a UPS truck that it won't break. So pick a really good box, thick walls, lay down a good uh, buffer of packing materials in the bottom, put the amp in, and then slowly work your way around to where you are filling in all of the surrounding area with packing material. One of the opportunities I take to connect with my customer is that in that moment when I print out the invoice for what they've bought uh, or the receipt, I write them a note, I throw in a couple stickers, sometimes I'll throw in a t-shirt, uh, and I like to put that underneath the handle of the amp if I'm getting it, or in the guitar, it'll go right under the strings. 
but I just want the first impression they have with their guitar to be a trusted friend who cares about them and is excited that they're getting this piece of gear. Uh, so they find this note, they're excited, uh, and then they get to experience the thing that they've just purchased from you. So once it's all packed up, the, the last thing is as you're doing packing tape, uh, I used to work in a warehouse and the guy I worked for would always yell, and it was a joke, but he was, he was also serious, which is nails on tape. Every piece of tape you put on, you have to scratch. You have to run your fingernails over. It just makes sure that that tape adheres. Because there's something about cardboard that gets kind of dusty and dry. And so that tape will lift up eventually. And that's a bad thing. Uh, if between where you ship it and where it arrives, if it opens up or if the tape lets go, that is a serious problem. So fingernails on tape, good tape, uh, and make sure that all of the sides and corners, every facet of the uh, closure of the box is taped. So the link to my G Bass store will be in the description below. You'll be able to see all the pedals and guitars and amps and everything I have for sale right now. If you find something you like, let me know and we will make a deal. We'll find a way to get gear from me to you and uh, you're gonna love it. So these are three things that I use every day in my actual business of buying and selling guitars. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I am the Guitar Hunter. If you wanna support the channel, buy a t-shirt, uh, jeremytheguitarhunter.com, buy some merch or check out my G Bay store, buy some gear. That is an easy way to make sure that I get to keep making videos. The other one is you can become a patron. So patreon.com slash guitar hunter. Uh, you get early access to videos, you get interactions with me, you're gonna get some behind the scenes footage, you're gonna get Q and A's, there's lots of fun perks that are happening over there. So with that, I will see you next time. I don't take it lightly that y'all watch these videos. I'm very thankful for each and every one of you. And I hope you go and find guitars that light your soul on fire. When you do find them, let me know. Tag me on Instagram at Jeremy the Guitar Hunter. All right, I'll see you later.